This existential threat means that we are on a hard science-based deadline and we cannot afford to lose. The fate of humanity hangs in the balance. If you want to know where business as usual leads, you need to cast your mind back to Hurricane Katrina hitting New Orleans 10 years ago because that was a glimpse of the future uh, for anyone who cares to look. That's what our current system is built to do. So you had a natural disaster of the kind we're going to see more and more of, colliding with weak and neglected infrastructure. Climate change is the biggest threat to humanity. And as workers, I think we have a central role to play in how we can combat that climate change. I think if we don't take this seriously, fundamentally, I think that um, it's going to be a very hostile world for us to live in. Workers understand that we have really dropped the ball when it comes to taking care of the environment. We understand that it's just been a profit-driven economy. There hasn't been any thought at all about long-term sustainability. So workers get it, and we're really concerned. We know that we need to start making decisions today before we lose our planet. And we know that, that there is precedent uh, for coming together in crisis and building a fair society. We know that it happened in the midst of the Great Depression. We know that it has happened after world wars. And we know that labor has led that process of a just reconstruction. Okay, I never did buy the argument that somehow it has to be either the environment or jobs. Clearly it can be both. And so there has to be a plan that includes both. So as soon as you t it decide to take emission reductions seriously, that means huge investments in transforming your energy grid, in energy efficiency, in public transit, and we know that that creates six to eight times more jobs than investments in the extractive sectors. The first thing that needs to be, I think, be assured by workers, should they have to lose their job or to make adjustment, they will have generous income support while they're going through that period. It's also important that we give them the best uh, opportunity to reskill themselves. In Toronto, in the city where I live, I've, I've seen an example where workers who lost their jobs in auto parts factories have have been the ones who were hired first to produce solar panels and wind turbines um, because they were the ones who knew how this type of very advanced machinery works. We've had a government for the last 10 years who've been climate deniers. So there's been no leadership from our national government as to the challenges that climate change poses. We need to have labor community, we need to have employers, government, everybody talking about a green future. Employers need to be, uh, be more innovative in the workplace. All workplaces need to examine how they use energy, how they contribute to the challenges, of course, to climate change. And more importantly, what are they going to do in, in working with unions and government? As unions, we've been dealing with these contentious issues for decades. Whether or not it's lean manufacturing, speed ups, downsizing as a result of the introductions of new technology. Uh, we've been at the forefront with bringing our members along. So this is really about having discussions with our members. It's about talking to them. It's about empowering them. And we are going to continue to do this on the shop floor. We're going to continue to press government. And we're going to make sure that we have these discussions in the union halls across the country. I think there's so much fear associated with climate change that we think that if we really look at this issue, like it would change everything about our, about our daily work. And I see it really differently. I actually think that climate change supercharges so much of the work that the labor movement is already doing in the fights against free trade deals, in protecting basic labor rights, and in fighting austerity. This has been the tradition of our movement. It's always been the history of our movement. We've never been fearful of the future. So it is critical for our members to see themselves in this process as a necessary part of how we build a better world and a more sustainable world.